is a lot of religions misunderstood or have we misunderstood things um, as humans, for example, the Bible and whatnot. Um, have those been misunderstood? Yes, thank you. Okay, so here is me actually trying to move the rods, okay? With my hands. As you can see, I can't really control the speed or the direction when I'm moving them because that's not really how it works. It's a lot of dowsing cropping up on TikTok, so it's probably a good time to review what dowsing is and is not. The, the rods that the, the two videos that we showed were using are typical dowsing rods, but it could be anything anything that uh, could move in your hands like that. The ones that they're using though, especially the second video showed how it's just a, you know, a copper wire in the little handle, um, is important to the functionality of that because the, the wires are very free moving, right? They could move back and forth very, very quickly. Now, dowsing has been around for decades, half a century longer uh, in, in its modern incarnation. The idea is that, you know, you can ask any yes or no question and the rods can either, you know, cross for a yes or move apart for a no. Obviously, you could all, you know, the other claim is that you could douse for stuff. You know, you could walk over moving water or water and they will move. The problem with dowsing is that it doesn't work, is that it's been studied you know, pretty much endlessly for decades and decades. And no one's been able to demonstrate in a scientific way with any reliability or reproducibility that there's any actual effect going on there. Further, there is no scientific or physical basis for an effect. It's basically magic. Um, in the first video, obviously, it's overtly spiritual. But even if it's not, even when you're dowsing for water or anything, the idea is that the, there's energy, some vague reference to energy is somehow going through the user and moving the rods. There is, however, a far simpler explanation for how the rods are moving, and it's called the idiomotor effect. This is a well-established phenomenon. The idea is that you can subtly, subconsciously move your muscles, uh, and you won't even, you won't, by definition, be aware of it. Uh, and that can you know, produce the results that we're seeing. So when you're holding the rods like this, if you don't know, no one's thinking that you're moving the rods by rotating your wrist this way. That obviously would not work. Uh, but all you would really need to do is just tilt it just at the slightest amount because they're only not going to move if they're perfectly vertical. You tilt them in or out even a little bit. Uh, even just some subconscious idiomotor movement, it would be enough to get those rods to either turn in or to turn out. That's the hypothesis. So the notion that you know, you're not moving it consciously this way is a straw man. That's not what anybody is saying. Is that you're subconsciously through the idiomotor effect just slightly altering the balance on those rods. Yes, it could happen without your awareness. It's been demonstrated, you know, many many times. That is a known phenomenon. That's what dowsing is. So how would we know? If dowsing is a subconscious idiomotor effect versus some kind of real external energy or some kind of magical energy that's making them move. Well, you would need to, to test it in a blinded way. You'd need to, to see, can the dowser get information that they don't already have? Now, obviously, if you're asking a question like, is there a God? There is no answer to that question scientifically. And so, uh, you know, the, there's no way to test whether or not they got the answer correct or not. It would be the target would have to be one where there's a verifiable answer, where there's an objectively correct, you know, yes or no answer. And when you do that kind of study, the dowsers are no better than chance. They can't demonstrate that they do better than absolute chance when trying to use dowsing to get information that can be verified. Uh, of course, you're you're safe, at least from scientific experimentation, if you're answering vague philosophical or spiritual questions, because there is no way to show that they were correct or incorrect. Although, personally, I would be cautious about relying upon what is the functional equivalent of a magic eight ball for spiritual advice or to guide you about the ultimate answers of life, the universe, and everything. Probably wouldn't rely upon the equivalent of a magic eight ball. That's just me. Uh, but don't confuse this for something actually happening. This is easily explained with known neurological and psychological phenomena.